Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We got a bevy of news stories for you today, including some brand new news on Sonic Frontiers. That's right, that game showing off last week at the Game Awards, coming holiday 2022, also to Nintendo Switch. Uh, so we have that to look forward to. Also, uh, some updates on sales data from the holiday period. Uh, how the hell did Switch do? I mean, you've seen probably part of the headline at this point, so you might already be aware that yeah, Nintendo did quite good, at least here in North America, the United States in particular, uh, thanks to the MPD report. And yes, folks, we have some potential news here on the next Nintendo Direct, uh, which, by the way, should actually be coming sometime in the next two months based on Nintendo's track history, not counting 2020 when they basically didn't do anything. That being said, I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. We are giving away three copies of Pokemon Legends Arceus. To enter, all you gotta do is head down to the description or the pinned comment and click clacky tap away on that viral sweep link. I wish all you guys luck on that. Also, we're on our road to 80 thousand subscribers so if we could somehow hit 80k and well before the end of the month i want to do something really special for you guys so let's just see what happens with that that being said let's get into our first story and this is about sonic frontiers the game obviously looked fantastic at the reveal trailer last week however there's a little bit of conundrum over whether or not we can obviously trust Sonic games. Sonic games almost always have really exciting reveals and don't always deliver at the end. I'm not trying to throw shade at the franchise. I actually quite enjoyed some of the more recent releases, but you know, then you have things like Sonic Boom uh, and others that just end up not hitting. So we have to obviously be cautiously optimistic and hype responsibly when it comes to Sonic Frontiers. There's also been a lot of debate of whether that was in-engine footage or CGI. Now, the difference between in-engine and CGI is obviously CGI is computer generated, you know, graphics and all that. So they're basically not representative of what the game will look in game outside of cutscenes. Whereas in-engine is more representative of what the game could look like um, when you play it. Although oftentimes in-engine, doesn't really match the final product either. So both of them aren't really perfect, although people prefer in-engine over CGI. But reality is we didn't actually see gameplay, so we can't be sure what this game even is. However, there were some details that came out after the Game Awards I wanna cover, and then brand new details that just dropped today. So here you go, take a look at that uh, trailer on repeat here, and let's actually get into this stuff. So. Developed by the experienced members, and by the way, this comes from Game Informer, of Sega's Sonic Team Japan, led by producer Sachiko Kawamura and director Morio Kashimoto, Sonic Frontiers will bring Sonic fans an all-new type of Sonic experience. In the dangerous and vast world of Sonic Frontiers, anything is possible, and players will have the freedom to explore the visually stunning open zone realm. Sonic Frontiers is a huge leap forward for the franchise, delivering an evolved gameplay experience that can be enjoyed by longtime Sonic fans and action adventure enthusiasts alike, said Takahashi Iazuka, creative officer at Sonic Team USA. With the effort of the talented developers at Sonic Team Japan, we've created an all new style of gameplay experience for Sonic the Hedgehog, where players will be able to explore lush and expansive landscapes with Sonic's signature speed and abilities. There's sure to be a lot of twists and turns around every corner in Sonic Frontiers, and we're excited to unveil more information about the game over the coming months. Worlds will collide in the Sonic the Hedgehog's newest adventure and experience like never before. Accelerate to new heights and experience the thrill of high velocity open zone freedom. Battle powerful enemies as you speed through Starfall Islands. Landscapes brimming with dense forests, overflowing waterfalls, sizzling deserts, and more. And it's being planned for holiday 2022. But then today from Polygon, we actually got a bit of a glimpse of the actual story. You can consider the spoilers, although like with Sonic and Mario, is it really much of a spoiler? Uh, the Sonic Frontiers, uh, Sonic longtime nemesis Dr. Eggman discovers an ancient technology on the Starfall Islands and installs his AI program, Sage, to hack in and take over. But there is more to this technology than he realizes, and unintended consequences immediately come to bear. Sonic must race against time to discover the truth, save his friends, and maybe even save himself at the same time same 
time. So obviously what we have here is a pretty intense Sonic game. Although again, when it comes to the story, that's pretty atypical of Sonic story. So not much to really glean from that. However, it is kind of cool that it's an open zone concept. So not open world, but still gonna have these big, massive, expansive zones. I don't really have a problem with that. Think of it kind of like if each area in Breath of the Wild, well, you know, it, which is fully open, you just couldn't cross over into the other areas you know without actually uh going through a hub zone or, or whatever the case might be so we'll have to see how this works out i'm very curious um obviously there's a lot of promise here it does look like they're trying to take sonic in a new direction now that they haven't tried something similar before you know you kind of can get some sonic adventure vibes uh from the trailer but still i think it's really exciting to at least think about and we'll have to see if they can pull off what they're hoping to be a new direction for sonic so yeah, I, I obviously always have hope for Sonic. Again, doesn't always deliver, but here is hoping they put their best foot forward. So this next story is actually about the MPD report that came out today from Matt Piscatella for the month of November. This is obviously one of the biggest sales period, uh, and it really determines who quote unquote wins the holiday season, as in who had the most sales over the holiday. And there's numbers to go around, but interestingly enough, PlayStation 5 doesn't really get mentioned much in these numbers. So that's really curious considering obviously the demand for that system, but obviously that could tell you the stock problems as well. So for what you need to know as Nintendo fans, Nintendo Switch actually took the number one spot both in unit sales and dollar sales. And Nintendo themselves actually gave us exact numbers on this following up the MPD report by saying they sold 1.13 million units just in the United States last month, and 550,000 of those units were sold on Black Friday. So yeah, Nintendo won in terms of the sales. So yeah, Nintendo won the holidays. I guess that's the story there. Uh, Call of Duty Vanguard is actually the number one best-selling game and number two best-selling game overall for the year. So you know, I guess that 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 Activision Blizzard company um, isn't worrying about too much when it comes to making money still. So there's that. I guess fans didn't react as negatively as maybe some people out there hoped to the news around that company. I don't think the casuals pay as much of as much attention. So that might have something to do with it. But again, then categorizing fans by hardcore core casual. I don't even know that that's even an accurate way to put it. All I know is the game did well. Um, obviously, uh, if you want to look for Nintendo, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shiny Pearl actually dropped in at the number three spot. And Mario Party Superstars from the month prior actually chimed in at number six, which is ironically two spots higher than in its launch month. So yeah, Mario Party Superstars did really, really well. Also, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit came in at number 10. Uh, I find that to be really, really nice to see. Obviously, it had a massive price drop, and I do think Mario Kart Live Home Circuit is really, really fun, especially if you happen to have children, although it can be fun as adults as well, playing with friends in particular. That being said, uh, here's Nintendo's top 10 software titles uh, from that month. And as you can see, it's just chock full of a lot of evergreen titles along with the new releases sprinkled in. One special note here though is on Shin Megami Tensei 5. So while it's number six on Nintendo's charts, it's actually the most money um, in terms of just dollars made uh, a Shin Megami Tensei game has ever made in the history of the franchise. So Shin Megami Tensei 5 made more money during its launch month than any other Shin Megami Tensei game. Now, notably, it doesn't mean it led in unit sales. There's been versions of of uh, you know, Shin Megami Tensei that actually sold better during launch in terms of its numbers, but they were being sold for a smaller price point. So just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind that this is actually a really good success story for Shin Megami Tensei 5 that's literally on just one platform. Uh, so I do think that this is actually mostly really, really good news. Uh, and here's the, a look at the other top 10 for just overall software and all that. Notably, Xbox Series isn't talked about much as well. We had heard that the S Xbox Series S might've been the best individual unit sell on Black Friday, but that doesn't mean it was the best for the month. Doesn't really matter. Nintendo took the crown. Nintendo's now taken the crown for 35 of the last 36 months, and it really doesn't look like they're gonna lose that crown anytime soon based on the game slate coming out next year. Uh, Nintendo literally could lead every single month next year in sales as well. I don't really know where the Switch train stops, uh, so good for them. They're also kind of proving that, hey, you know what? S the weakest hardware continues to be the best selling hardware. Uh, that has actually proven true throughout gaming console history. If you actually go back uh, throughout the history of every generation of console, it's always been the weakest that sells best. There has 
a bit of an exception, um, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Wii U, that all being in the same era, PlayStation 4 was actually the best selling. That's like the one exception to the rule. Otherwise, it's always been the weakest hardware sells best. So. Yeah, take that for what you will. So this last story is a rumor. So grab those tinfoil haps, get the salt ready, throw it over your right shoulder, do whatever you need to do because we are getting into rumor territory here. Part of the rumor is safe. The rest of the rumor, not so much. And this comes from Sharon over on Twitter. She does have a history now. I, I would say going back a little bit over a year, she doesn't have a huge following, um, which is why she's kind of flown under the radar. Uh, but she's actually said a lot of things were gonna happen and they have happened. Um, so kind of like with Samus Hunter before, if this stuff ends up not being true, we'll just toss uh, Sharon to the side and uh, move on with our day. But until then, uh, she has actually mentioned that, hey, you know, she told us before the Game Awards that Breath of the Wild 2, let alone Zero Zelda, Zero Nintendo, was going to be at the Game Awards. She was actually the only quote unquote insider stating quite plainly we were getting nothing Nintendo at the Game Awards. So give her some credit for that. Now, she did say that, you know, because the reason we're not getting that stuff at the Game Awards is because Nintendo wants to have a jam-packed first Nintendo Direct of the year. Now, Nintendo Direct tradition, uh, traditionally happened in January or February for their first one. Um, you know, we're talking about a general Direct, not a specific game Direct. There might very well be a Pokemon Legends Arceus Direct in January. And it does make sense for Nintendo to maybe push the Nintendo Direct till February, wait for Legends Arceus to come out, don't take away, you know, some of that marketing uh, that the Pokemon company is going to want to do all next month so what she is basically saying is look forward to february where a nintendo direct will happen now that on its own isn't really worth reporting but it's what's going to be in that direct that she was very specific about that we need to pay attention to so she did say breath of the wild 2 is going to be in that direct that's obviously a really bold statement but also it's supposed to be coming next year so maybe not too surprising she also said splatoon 3 is going to be in that direct again another game supposed to come next year wouldn't be that surprising. But now we get into the ones that, okay, two more games she talks about. One of them being, we're going to see the reveal of the Metroid Prime Remake. Now this has been long rumored by more credible leakers out there. So it would be interesting to see if it does get unveiled here. And maybe it's because it gives a little distance between it and Metroid Dread. But yeah, uh, that is something she does say is gonna be unveiled there. So that's another thing we'll just have to wait and see. Another thing she says will be unveiled there, and this is just something we assume exists, but we haven't actually seen a lot of evidence pointing to it. She says Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is gonna get announced at this Direct. And I find that to be obviously very fascinating because if you remember, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 came out back in 2017. So if Xenoblade Chronicles 3 gets announced in this Direct, you would presume it's coming next year. And that's just another 2017 IP coming out again in 2022. So 2022 is literally shaping up, assuming that this is true, to really match up with what happened in 2017. Maybe not the maybe not the order of the game releases. Obviously, Breath of the Wild is not like the first thing coming out next year. Pokemon Legends Arceus is, but it looks like the slate of games is really trying hard to repeat 2017's absolutely banger list. And this is one reason why I noted earlier in the MPD that I don't think Switch sales are actually going to slow down all that much over the next year, even though this following year is traditionally the big drop off year for most consoles. Even play PlayStation 4 starts to decline during year five and year six. It might still maintain 20 mil or 18 mil, 17, but it usually uh, is in the decline. I don't know if Switch is gonna be in the decline. It might even sell more than it did this year. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I'm not sure if we're getting a Mario Kart next year or a new Mario game. But hey, right now we know about Sparks of Hope, we know about Legends Arceus, we know about Breath of the Wild 2, we know about Splatoon 3, we know about Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Like the list is just building and building and building to the point that Nintendo will have either a major game coming you know, every other month, if not, you know, two out of every three months, Nintendo could have major games come out. And that's really going to be exciting. It's going to be interesting to see how Nintendo lines up some of these major hits with the holidays. Do they save Zelda for the holidays? Uh, do they have a different game, a Mario Kart or a new Mario game to hit, hit for the holidays? Do they want Xenoblade 3 to kind of get a holiday bump and they think Zelda will sell no matter when they release it, which is probably true. Or do they want half Splatoon 3? I, I don't really know what they're going to do. What's going to be their big March game, right? Is that Kirby? Are they going to put Kirby in that slot? Splatoon in that slot? I, there's a lot of questions we don't know, and most of them should be answered in this direct. So again, 
History tells us, yeah, we're getting a direct in the next two months. Okay. History also tells us if there's a major game coming out in January, it probably won't be in January. There'll be individual game directs for the major game. Okay, fine. So February is probably the month. It's reasonable to see why she would say that and guess that, or at least, you know, if you presume that she's making it up. But this other stuff, I find that fascinating. Again, rumors, grains of salt, truckloads of salt, do what you want to do with it. I wanted to bring it up because I've been following Sharon now for a little while and been noticing that almost everything she says is correct. There is one thing she did say recently that maybe gave me a little bit of pause um, and that's that Metroid Prime 4 isn't coming till 2026. And I even asked her and she didn't respond. Um, like that seems a little crazy that one, that game would be in 2026 and two, that Nintendo would actually be planning a game out for five years from now when it's already been in development for two to three years. Um, but that could also mean the game's in development hell. I, I have no idea. That's another thing she does have floating out there. I don't want to ignore that in case Metro Prime 4 gets announced and is coming next year or the year after. So I'm just throwing that out there as well. She did say that. Um, I sincerely hope that's not true, but it is what it is, folks. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch each of you guys in my next video. In fact, I think maybe a live stream tonight. We'll see what happens.